Thanks so much for coming out to closing night of Midsummer Night's Dream. It really means a lot that you guys have come out and see this amazing show. Um, if you want to keep updated on all of our activities here at theater, we have a great updated website and Facebook page. Um, we have uh, comedy almost every Thursday. We have jazz first Fridays. We have a murder mystery dinner coming up next month. So we hope you can make it out for one of those. Uh, the show is about an hour and 40 minutes, including the intermission, and uh, there's, uh, there, that's an ample time to go out and get yourself a snack in the middle. Um, please, no flash, actually no photography and videoing it distracts the actors and your fellow audience members, so make sure you turn off your phones so they're not making noise also. Um, if you need a fire exit, you can go straight out these doors, straight out the front, out the side door that way, or out this way, but hopefully you won't be. Um, if you check out your program, we have uh, some sponsors. We have Family Fund Do Genealogy, Non CD Photography, and uh, Uptown Group. So we hope you'll support those awesome people. Um, I think there's something else I need to tell you. I think that's my cue to get off. <laughs> Not with vantages Demetrius's. 
And to more than all these boasts can be, I am beloved of the beauteous Carmilla. Why should I not then prosecute my right? Demetrius, a legend to his head made love to Meteor's daughter, Helena. Mm -hmm. And look at her love, and she, sweet lady, dotes. Devoutly dotes. Dotes in idolatry upon this spotted and inconstant man. <laughs> <laughs> I must confess that I have heard so much. You know, to be just to be thought spoke thereof, or rather overfull of self-affairs, I mind you lose it. But come, Demetrius, and come, Aegeus, I have some private schooling for you both. As for you, fair Omnia, look you on yourself to fit your offenses to your mother's will, otherwise the law of Athens yields you up, which by no means may we extenuate. As to death, to vow a single life. Come, my partner. <laughs> <laughs> what cheer, my love? <laughs> With duty and desire, we follow you. Oh, <sighs> now, my love, why is your cheek so pale? How chance the roses there to fade so fast? Be like the want of rain, of which I can well be to you. Mind, 
and therefore is winged Cupid painted blind. Nor hath love's mom any judgment taste, wings and no eyes figure on heating haste. For ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eye, he hailed on oath that he was only mine. And when this hail some heat from Hermia felt, so he dissolved, and showers of oaths did melt. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight, and then to avoid will he tomorrow night pursue her, and for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But hear me to redict my pain, to have his sight thither and back again. <laughs> Most obscenely and courageously. 
take pains. Be perfect. I And the Duke's so up, we meet. Emma! Hold or cut both strings. This 
spring, this summer, the chai gone and the angry winter change their water rules. And in this base world, by their increase, matters not which is which. And the same progeny of evil. Progeny of evil? Comes from our debate, from our dissension. You were meant it then, it lies in you. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? <coughs> I do but beg a little change, little boy. To be my attention. Set your heart at rest. The very land lies on the child of me. <coughs> How long will this wood intend you to stay? Perchance till after these is running day. And if you'll patiently dance in our rounds and see our new my revels, go with us. If not, shun me, and I shall spare your haunts. Give me the boy, and I will go with thee. Not my fairy kingdom! Fairest, oh way, we shall die down with our longer stay. Well, go thy way! Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle one, come here. <laughs> Thou rememberest the flower, the herb I should be once. <coughs> Choose of it upon sleeping eyelids laid, will make all man or woman mad that dote upon the next life creature it sees. Fetch me this herb, uh, and be thou here again, and Leviathan can swim with thee. I'll put a girl around the earth in forty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Having once the juice of this, I'll watch the time when she is asleep, and drop the liquor of it in her eye. The next thing she then waking looks upon, beat on lion, bear, or wolf, or bull, a meddling monkey or a busy ape. She shall pursue it with the soul of love. And dare I take this charm from off her sight, as I can do so with another her. I'll make her render her page to me. Demetrius! But who comes here? <coughs> I'm invisible, and will overhear the comments. <laughs> I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? One will slay, the other slayeth me. Thou toldst me they were still enough to this wood. Hence, get thee gone, and follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant. <laughs> Yet you draw not iron, for my heart is as true as steel. Leave your power to draw, and I shall have no power to follow me. <coughs> <laughs> do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I not, as plain as truth? Tell you I do not, nor I cannot love you. Even for that do I love you the more. <laughs> I am your spaniel, and Demetrius, the more you beat me, I will fawn on you. What worser place can I beg in your love, and in a place with high respect to me, than to be used as you use your dog? To not too much the hate of my spirit. For I am sick when I hold on you. And I am sick when I hold not on you. I'll run from thee and hide me in the brakes, and leave thee to the mercy of the wild beasts. The water is not not so hard as you. I will not stay thy questions, let me go. Or, if thou follow me, do not leave, or I shall do thee mischief in the wood. I am the temple and the town of the field, you do me mischief! cried Demetrius. I'll follow thee, and make a heaven of hell to die upon the hands I love so well. Fare thee well, then. And he do thee this grove, thou shalt fly, and he shall seek thy love. Ah! I saw the flower there. <laughs> Welcome, wanderer. I, there it is. I'm afraid you give it to me. I go think where the wild thyme blows, where oaks and the nodding violet grows. Yes, sleeps the time some time of the night. Glow on these flowers with dances in the light. The juice of this I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. Take thou some of it and seek through this grove a sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he spies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on. <coughs> with some care, that he may prove more fond of her than she upon her love. <laughs> and meet me ere the first cock crow. Fear not, my lord, your servant shall do so.
Then for the third argument, heads. Some to kill gangers and muscular spells, some to make war with your rear mice to make small elves' coats, and some to keep back the clamorous owl that bite the groups and wander their queen's spirits. Sing me now to sleep, and then to your offices and let me rest. Your spotted snakes with double tongues, stormy hedge, hot speed not to see, roots and light. When thou dost wake, do it for thy true love take. Love and languish for his sake. Be a dark ounce or cat or bear, hard or ball with bristled hair, in that eye it do appear. When thou wakest, it is thy dear. Wake when some vile thing is near. Oh, how 
off in a word, as that I need to perish on my sword. Do not say so, Lysander, say not so. <gasps> what thou of love your Hermia? Lord, what thou? Yet Hermia still loves you. <coughs> Be content. Content with Hermia? No, I do repent the tedious minutes with her I spent. It's not Hermia, but Helena I love. Who would not change a raven for a dove? <laughs> Eye. You must plot my insufficiency. Good troth you do me wrong, good soup you do, in such a disdainful manner for me to woo. Ah! Very well. Of course, I must confess. I thought you, Lord, of more true gentleness. Oh, that a lady of one man refused, should of another therefore be abused. She seems not Hermia. Hermia sleep go there, and never come my sanity near. And all my powers, address your love and might, and honor Helena, to be her knight. Thisbe, 
The flowers of odious savor sweet. Odors. Odors. Odors savor sweet. <coughs> so hath thy breath, my dearest Thisbe dear. <laughs> but hark! A voice! Stay thou out here a while, and by and by I will get to thee appear. A stranger careless than e'er played here. Must I speak now? Yes, for you must understand. He goes, but so you know it, that he heard. And is to come again. Most really you careless, <laughs> most city wide of you, of color like a red rose or triumphant fire, most brisky juvenile, indeed most lovely jewel, as true as true source that yet would never tire, I'll wait to be peerless at many as two. <coughs> now yes, two men. And you must not speak that yet. That, you are such a peerless. You speak all your party parts, cues and all. <laughs> peerless enter, your cue is passed. It is never tired. Oh, as true as source will ever stay up and never tired. <laughs> Master Cobweb. <laughs> the 
point about my finger, I shall make both. Now, you are your name, honest gentleman. Peas Blossom. I pray you, good Master Peas Blossom. <laughs> Commend me to Mr. Squash, your mother, <laughs> and to Master Peas God, your father. <laughs> You have more acquaintance too with Master Peas Blossom. Hey, your name, I beseech you, sir. Master Seed? <laughs> Good Master Mustard Seed, I know your patience well. <laughs> that same cowardly, giant like our thief have devoured many a man of your house. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. Your kindred have made my eyes water air now. <laughs> I shall desire you of more acquaintance too, but that's not the two more. Come, wait upon him, lead him to my bower. <laughs> <laughs> I did bid thee do. I took you sleeping. That is finished too. And 
the Athenian maid by his side, that when she went, with force she must be eyed. Hurry up! Stand close. This is the same Athenian. This is the woman, but not this the man. <laughs> oh, why are you thinking that loves you so? Lay your breath so bitter on your bitter foe. Now I am a child, but as you do, for thou art the rescue me, cause and curse. It cannot be but thou hast murdered him. So shall murder look, so dead, so dead. So should the murder look, and so should I. Here's the heart of your stern cruelty. Yet you, the murderer, look so bright, so clear, as yonder Venus in her luring sphere. What's this to my Lysander? Oh, I'm going to be Demetrius, my love, and I'm going I'd rather be this carcass to my pounds. Out, dog! Out, her! You drive me past the bounds of a maiden's patience. Hast thou slain him then? You spend your passion on this price and mood. I am not guilty of Lysander's blood. Doris dead for all that I can tell. I pray thee, tell me that he is well. And if I could, what should I get there for? A privilege. Never to see me more. And by my hand, <laughs> the more I said, see me no more, whether I can be dead or no. <coughs> there is no following her in this fierce pain. Here, therefore, for a while, I will remain. Mistakes quite, and they that loved you some some true love sight. I found the wood go swifter than the wind, and hell of Athens look thou fine. By some illusion, see thou bring her here, and I'll anoint his eyes again she to appear. I go, I go, look how I go, swifter than the air of the Tartar's boat. <laughs> Flower of this purple dye. Hit to the Cuban's archery, sink an apple of his eye. When his love he doth espy, let her shine as gloriously as Venus of the sky. And thou wakest, if she be by, beg her cup for remedy. Demetrius to awake.
passion of words. I scorn you not. It seems that you scorn me. I do persever. Make mouths upon me when I turn my back. Wink at each other. Hold sweet jest up. This sport well carried shall be chronicled. If you have anything to grace from here, you would not make me such an argument. But very well, just part with my own fault, which death or absence soon shall remedy. Helen, stay. I pray you, my love, my life, my soul, her Helena. Oh, excellent, sweet. Do not take her. <coughs> she cannot take true. That can be helped. <laughs> Helen, I love you. I like I do. I say I love thee more than he can do. If thou sayest so, withdraw and prove it true. Quick, come. Go. 
churchyards, damning spirits all, who in crossways and flood have burial, now to their wormy beds have gone, for less than a day look their shades upon. They willfully themselves exile from night, and I consort with black brow of night. We are spirits of another sort. <laughs> I, with the morning's love, have offered me a sport, but notwithstanding haste, make no delay. We may bet this business yet ere day. Up and down, up and down. Eat. 
truly a type of prophet. I can run your good dry oats. <laughs> Methinks I have desired for a bottle of hay. Good hay. Sweet hay. I have no fellow. I have ventures for to see the squirrels for and fetch the nuts. I'd rather have a handful or two of dry peas. But I pray you, let none of your people stir. I have an exposition of sleep come upon. Sleep thou, but I wind thee in my arms. Fairs be gone and always way. <laughs> Now this sweet sight, I don't it now I do begin to pity. Now that I have the boy, I will undo this hateful imperfection on my eyes. And, gentle Puck, take the transformed scalp from off the head of this thing in Swain, so that when he awaken when the others do, be back again to Athens all of hell, to think no more of this night's absence as a fierce vexation of a dream. But first I release the fairy queen. He is thou wast wont to be, he is thou wast wont to see. <coughs> Diane's bud or Cupid's flower hath such force and blessed power. Now, Titania, wake you, my sweet queen. My Oprah, this is what visions I've seen. You thought I was never of an ass. There lies your love. <laughs> Silence, for a while. Robin, take off his head. Titania, music call and strike more dead. The common sleep of all these vibes of sense. Music call, music such as charmer's sleep. When thou wakest with thy own fool's heart. Now thou and I are new in amity, and will tomorrow midnight solemnly. Dance into Theseus house triumphantly, and bless it all to fair prosperity. With these faithful pass of love to be with Theseus, all in jollity. Fair king, attend and mark. I do keep the living mark. Then, my queen, in silent sad, trip me away after the night's shade. We that love can come soon, swifter than the wandering moon. Come, my lord. And in our flight, Tell me how it came this night that I sleeping here was found with these mortals on the ground. <laughs> Before the Duke, her adventure, do make it the more gracious. 
I shall sing it at her death. Go, <laughs> <laughs> one of you, find out the foster. For now our observation is performed. And since we have the favor of the day, my love shall get the music of my hands. We will, that queen, up to the mountain's top. We will mark the musical confusion of hounds and echo in conjunction. The songs? What names are these? My lord, this is my daughter, Hermia. This Larsander, this Demetrius is, and this Helena. Old neighbor's Helena. I wonder if they're being here together. <laughs> no doubt. They must have rose up early to its own right of bed. And here in our tent, came here and graced our solemnity. But speak, Jesus. Is this not the day the Tommy has to give an answer of her choice? I, my lord, it is. Good morning, friends! St. Valentine is past. Begin these good words to come now. Pardon, my lord! <laughs> I know you two are rival enemies. How come this gentleman from the world has hated so far from jealousy? To sleep by hatred and fear no enmity. Half sleep, half waking, but as yet I swear, I cannot truly gain how I say how I came to be here. I came with Hermia, and there are intent for us to be gone from Athens, where he might have a cruel grip of the Athenian law. Enough! Enough! My lord, you have enough. I beg the law, the law upon his head! Demetrius, they would have stolen away, they would, thereby defeating you and me, you of your wife, and me of my consent. I consent that she should be your wife. My lord, fair Helen told me of herself, of this their purpose and of this wood, and I, fearing, <coughs> followed them, fair Helen unhandsome, following me. But, my good lord, I would not know what power, but by some power it is. My love to Hermia, melted in the snow, seems to me now as the remembrance of my own God, which in my childhood did it upon it. And all the faith and virtue of my heart, the object and pleasure of my eye, is only Helena. Fair loves you are fortunately met, and of this discourse we will more hear not. But she is, I will overbear your will. Oh! For in the temple of my by with us, these couples shall be eternally met. Away with us, Athens. Three and three, we'll hold the feast with great solemnity. Come, my Hippolyta. These things seem small and distinguishable. He thinks I see things with parted eye, and everything seems double. And so he thinks I have found Demetrius like a jewel. My own and not my own. Are you sure that we are awake? It seems yet we sleep, we dream. Do you not think the Duke was here when us follow him? We had our mother, and Hippolyta, and they did bid us follow us to the temple. <clears throat> Why then, we are awake, let us go. And by the way, let us recount our dreams.
I am no true Athenian. I will tell you everything. Right as it fell out. What is your sweet Bob? Not a word. <laughs> All that I will tell you is that the youth hath died. Get your barrel together. New ribbons to your beard and strings to your pups. Let every man look for his part. For the short and the long is our play. Is preferred. Yes. In any case, let this be half clean linen, and let not him that plays the lion bear his nails, for they shall hang out for the lion's claws. And most dear actors, eat no lions, <laughs> nor garlic, for we are to utter sweet breath. And I do not doubt but to hear them say, it is a sweet comedy. No more words. Away! Go away! It is strange, my Theseus, because love you speak of. More strange than true. I may never believe these antique fables, nor these fair toys. Loves and madmen have such secret grace, such shaping fantasies that apprehends more than cool reason of an audience. The lunatic, the lover, and the poet of imagination all command. One sees more devils than vast hell can hold. That is, the madman. The lover sees heaven's beauty in the proud Egypt. The poet's eye, the fine frenzy rolling, doth glance from heaven to earth, from earth to heaven. As imagination bodies form, the forms of things unknown, the poet's pen turns them to shapes and gives to airy nothing a local habitation and a name. Such tricks have strong imagination that apprehend some joy and comprehend some ringer of that joy. But in the night, imagining some fear, how easy is a bush supposed to bear? But all the story of that pull over and the minds. Transfigured so together, one way to set them fancy images, and grows to something of great constancy. The house will be strange and admirable. <laughs> Here come the lovers, full of joy and love. Joy, gentle friends, joy and fresh days of love accompany your hearts. More than two us, we can wear the walks to reward. Where is our usual magic of mouth? What rebels are on hand? <laughs> is there no play to ease the anguish of a torturing hour? Call the script! We are ready to see Say, what enrichment have we planned for this evening? What mask? What music? I'll show you a guy of the lazy time of not with some delight. There's a great time of this
should hear of pain. The ashes are handed by your shovel, and you shall know all that you are like to know. <laughs> Mark, poor knight, 
what dreadful dole is here? Eyes, do you see? <laughs> Now it is that time of night that the graves all gaping wide, 
Each one lets forth its sprite in the churchway paths to run. <coughs> Angry fairies that do run by the triple headed sea, from the presence of the sun, falling darkness like a dream. Now our frolic. Not a mouse shall disturb this hallowed house. I am set with room before to sweep the dust behind the door. Rule the house, give good and light. By the dead and drowns and fire. Every elf and fairy sprout. Hop as light as bird from bride. Hand in hand, fairy grace, let me see, and bless this place. Trip away, make no stay, beats me all by break of day. If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is many, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. And this weekend I will be no more guilty. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you will pardon, we will mend. And as I am an honest cook, if we have other luck now to escape the serpent's tongue, we will make amends ere long. Else the puck and liar call. So good night unto you all. Give me your hand, baby friends, and Robin shall restore amends. <laughs>